Welcome to the nightly wrap-up video. My name is DZ. The Fed raised its federal funding rate, markets went bananas, and Cardano is upsetting DeFi. This is your nightly news wrap-up. Let's get it. Roger, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Let's talk about whether the Fed is doing the right thing by raising interest rates at this point, given the uncertainties we still have with Russia and Ukraine. So I think the answer is yes, the Fed is doing the right thing by raising rates at this point. Recognize that inflation uh, is a clear and present danger. Uh, it's a problem for Wall Street. It's a problem for Main Street. Uh, and I think it's uh, an important element of the Fed's mission. Uh, in fact, they've got a dual mission, is to keep inflation uh, low and stable. So they've got, to, they've got to move. Having said that, and you saw it in Chairman Powell's testimony, the word uncertainty features uh, prominently uh, in their thinking, I'm sure. And I think the way it will play out is perhaps the pace will be a little slower uh, and they'll be very focused on incoming data to guide them. But they absolutely have to move now to maintain credibility and to be consistent with their mission. Consistent with their mission, Powell and the gang are at it again. Yesterday, chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, held a press conference. After the Fed made a decision to hike up the interest rate 0.25%, the first increase since 2018. Although the market responded well to this announcement, there's a catch. There's six more Fed meetings this year and they expect to raise the rate at each and every one of those meetings. What's the point of this, you ask? Since the pandemic began, the money printer went crazy in an effort to help us stay above water since the country was forced to shut down. It's no secret that inflation has been getting out of control. In fact, inflation is up almost 8% year over year and this is their attempt to start combating it. The Fed's press release also cited Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a reason for the federal funding hikes, since the implications for the U.S. economy are highly uncertain. You might ask, how does this interest hike help combat inflation? Simply put, by raising the federal funds rate, the cost of borrowing money rises. This discourages spending and in the long run will help reduce inflation. Couldn't this cause a recession? Let's see what Mr. Powell has to say. In my view, the probability of a recession within the next year is not particularly elevated. And why do I say that? Aggregate demand is currently strong, and most forecasters expect it to remain so. If you look at the labor market, also very strong. Conditions are tight, and payroll job growth is continuing at very high levels. Household and business balance sheets are strong. And so all signs are that this is a strong economy, in, indeed uh, one that uh, will be able to uh, flourish I don't have a crystal ball, so it remains to be seen if he's right or wrong here. What I do know is that once they raise the rate six more times this year, that will be the most they have increased the interest rates in one year since 2005. In 2005, that was the first domino, and we all know what happened in 2008. But unlike 2005, they don't have a steady supply chain, low employment, or oil shortages. So the only way they can combat inflation is to raise interest, which will decrease demand and spending, which consequently will slow down the economy. So how does this affect your everyday American? CNBC reports that this rate hike will slightly increase the interest rates on mortgages, auto loans, home equity lines of credit, credit cards, and private student loans. Once again, the American people have to pay for the mistakes of the people on Capitol Hill. But at the very least, let's have faith the changes they are making will lead us in the right direction. Here's a quick rundown of what's going on in the crypto space. Since Ukraine has received almost $100 million in crypto donations so far, in response to this generosity of the industry, crypto has officially been legalized in Ukraine. Hopefully this small win will go a long way for the people in Ukraine. This news from the Fed and Ukraine legalizing Bitcoin as a digital asset, the crypto and stock markets reacted accordingly. They pumped. Why? It looks like there may be more asset purchases this year, which in the short term is going to mean even more inflation despite the rate hike. The price of Cardano isn't where it was during the several large pumps in 2021. That doesn't mean they're not moving forward, especially in DeFi. Back in January, Cardano's first DeFi application, Muesli Swap, was launched. Since then, they've launched several other DeFi platforms, including Meld, MinSwap, and the leader of their DeFi ecosystem, SundaySwap, which is backed by Alameda Research. Cardano's total value locked, or their TVL, in their DeFi ecosystem has increased by over $100 million just this month, totaling to over $225 million. Data from DeFiLlama.com shows that Cardano has risen into 28th place 
by market cap in DeFi and has risen over 28% this week, almost 97% just this month. Not bad for a project that just entered the DeFi space in January. As bullish as that is, keep in mind this is before the Vassal Hard Fork coming in June. According to this tweet by Charles Hoskinson, in terms of TVL, we ain't seen nothing yet. Let us know your favorite DeFi project in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. That's all I got. Be blessed. DZ out.